Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well. And today, the wife and I, we are on the road. But you know what? We never miss a chance to drink some great whiskey, to review some great whiskey, and then to talk about it, uh, even if it is an away game. So today, we are drinking a low-key whiskey that I suspect is going to be awesome, which is this Ichiro Blue Limited Edition World Whiskey 2022, which is a blend of whiskeys, obviously like it sounds, from around the world by the Japanese powerhouse indie distiller Ichiro Akuda. So we'll try it out. We'll give it a score based on the nose, on the palate, and on the finish. And then we're going to put it on the leaderboard to see where it falls within respect of the other whiskeys that we have tried thus far. Now, if you like the reviews, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and pretty much all the great stuff we got cooking up for you, and we got a ton of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel to grow. It pleases the whiskey gods. And you know what? You get notified when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right, now let's get down to the review. All right, so let's get this bad boy open and uh, see what it tastes like. Because you know what? There's not a ton of reviews on it uh, on the internet. So I'm really interested to see what all the hype is about. Because I've seen a lot of stuff uh, on Reddit about it. Uh, and also some of the Japanese whiskey forums, but I haven't seen really too many reviews of it. So let's get a pop. Oh, get a glass, obviously. Let's get a pop. Hey, that's actually pretty good. And let's get a little juice here. Wow, that is really interesting. Very light colored. Wow, I don't know if you all can see that. It's, uh, it's pretty light, which I guess is what you'd expect from Japanese whiskey. All right, so while that's opening up, let's talk a little bit about this Ichiro Blue World Whiskey. So first of all, the master distiller for this whiskey, his name is Ichiro Akuda. <laughs> As you would imagine, it's right here on the box. Uh, he is the master distiller for Chichibu uh, Distillery, which is a Japanese distillery, which more importantly is the heir of the Hanu family of distillers, which if you are familiar with Japanese whiskeys, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I mean, think of the Hanyu playing card series, uh, which you may or may not have seen, or maybe see some whiskeys with some pretty crazy Japanese artwork on them and even crazier auction prices on them and if you have then you would definitely be familiar with them furthermore some of the now closed hanyu distilleries remaining stocks of whiskies which had previously been used in ichiro blends are potentially being used in this one as well at least uh, that's how the rumor goes now this is because as a world blend it is purportedly a delicate balance between scotch canadian rye american bourbon irish whiskey and single malt the important one single malt from the chichu buoys stocks Single malt from the Chichibui buoys, Chichibu's, Chichibui. and also single malt from Chichibui's stocks, which again, super important. Now, each of the whiskeys in here are 10 years old, with some of them ranging from 20 to 40 years old, although there is not an age statement on the bottle, so you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt. Now, the ABV on it is a uh, much more fortified 48% uh, than what you're gonna get with the typical kind of Yamazaki 12 or Hibiki Harmonies or Hakushu 12s as well, um, which are normally at 43% or below. Now, this one specifically, uh, we did end up getting at a local liquor store, like a corner liquor store here in Los Angeles. We got it for $199.99. Um, and really the only other place I can see it, because it doesn't seem to be popping up a lot, is I did see it in a Las Vegas Total Wine for $269.99. So obviously you can see why we jumped at the opportunity to get it at the lower price. So let's take a look at the initial impressions on uh, the whiskey. And I think, first of all, as you can see in there, which, uh, you know, <laughs> you can see that. Um, it is very, very light. It has a super pleasant, like, straw color to it. I really like that. Uh, it makes it really interesting. Um, it doesn't give off really any strong ABV or anything like that. Uh, there's not a strong um, alcohol uh, nose to it, uh, which I guess is what you would expect. I mean, 48% is not nothing, but it's, you know, it's definitely not, um, you know, an ABV monster like some of the other bourbons we've been trying. All right, so let's see what we get on the nose here. You know, right now, I will tell you, the nose is super duper delicate uh, on this whiskey. There, I mean, there is a there, there, there. 
right? Uh, there's a lot of complexity. Um, and uh, it's one of those things that are so delicate, though. You, you really have to put your ear to the door to hear it. And isn't, there is a lot of, like, balancing going on here. You know, it's uh, one step one way and another step the opposite direction. It's like all the smells are, are happening, but canceling each other out. That being said, you definitely get a rye influence on here. Uh, and that is the first thing that kind of hits me in the nose on there. Uh, and that grain is very forward. And you know what? There is no, absolutely no AB burn on this one at all. Um, it's just so light. There is honey. There is complexity with a masculine, like portions of bourbon. So things like vanilla and leather and tobacco and, oh, you know what? Candied walnuts. But there's also definitely more, I guess I would call them like a feminine flower field, light grassy flavors. And just the overall delicacy of it, right? It doesn't feel like firm, it feels very, uh, I'd say whimsical and, and youthful. So on the nose score on this one, you know, this one's a, a little tough to score. On the one hand, I love the complexity, the delicate balance on the nose on this, but just so not forthcoming. So for being a whiskey with, I guess we'll call it with such discretion, uh, I'm gonna take off one point. Uh, I love the complexity, but I just don't love the fact that you need a microscopic nose to be able to sort out all the different flavors and the distinctions between them. So I'm gonna get it five out of six points. All right, so let's move on to the palette and the finish and see if the mouthfeel is any more interesting than what we got on the nose. All right, so let's give this a try on the palette here. Oh, wow. I like that. Right up front, you get like summer green apple pie. Ooh, um, but it's, it's definitely as light as you would suspect. There's no surprise on that. And after that initial burst, I get like a, <laughs> I don't know, 90s kids. I get like a, a green tea flavor, like the old school Sobe green teas I used to be able to get back in the day. Hmm. There is a slight ABV burn, which is definitely surprising. I didn't think it would be there, but it doesn't feel like it's 48%. It feels like maybe 40%, 42%. Uh, it's very, very light. And that on the back end, that green apple skins on the finish, I like that. Um, the body is very, mm, very light, flexible, and it seems to be morphing into like different shapes as the flavor changes throughout the taste. It is very delicate, uh, as you would expect from the nose, but it's got like a medium to low medium body, which is, uh, you know, again, more than what I've suspected on the nose. And it definitely doesn't come off as watery. For the finish here is medium length, about kind of as long as you would expect from a whiskey that is uh, so light as this one. Um, and you know, the other thing is that I don't get the complexity. It's not as complex on the palate as I would have thought it would have been from the nose. But I think that might be because rather than all the whiskeys kind of playing together at once, all the blended whiskeys, you know, playing all at the same time, each of them seems to be taking their turns and playing to their strength, kind of more like a, a jazz trio rather than like a marching band. Lastly, there is like a, some nice like butteriness, like a grass butter <laughs> right at the end. I like that. All right, so for the palate score, I really like the episodic nature of this whiskey. Uh, it takes you on a lighthearted journey where each of the blended whiskeys has a chance to show you their wares and you're able to embrace them. <laughs> and the best part of the palette is that in between the steps, I guess, in between each of the different whiskeys, in between each of the scenes, um, it's those transitions where you get the nice blended taste of the two as you wade from one to the other. Um, it is light, but it is much more upfront about its flavors on the palate than it is on the nose. So for a score overall, I'm gonna give it a pretty good score. I'm gonna give it 11 out of 15 on the palate. Now the finish is not stellar in comparison to some of the bourbons that we've been trying lately, because they have long, long finishes that go on and on and on like drunken uncles at Christmas, but um, it is about as good as what you're gonna get out of a whiskey that is so light and delicate as this one. So on the finish, I'm gonna give it a six out of nine. I like the finish, and again, it's just, you know, if you're into these types of Japanese blended whiskeys, it's what you would expect, it's what you would know, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, you're never gonna get a long, long finish out of a whiskey like this. Now, from an expert opinion, from someone who is brilliant and truly knows how to be coy, how to be delicate, and <laughs> how to be complex, let's get a little bit of an opinion from the wife. Oh, it's called sweeter. Like you. And I'm gonna take a point five off of the palette. 
All right, so for the final score for the Intro Blue, on the nose, I gave it five out of six points. On the palette, I gave it 11 out of 15 points. And for the finished score, uh, which I thought was reasonably good for what it is for such a light whiskey, I gave it six out of nine points. Now, when we factor in the wife score of negative 0.5 points, we get a total score of 21.5 points, which is pretty good until you consider that this whiskey was, uh, you know, $200 bottle. Um, but again, you know, when you're thinking about these kind of whiskeys, these Japanese whiskeys, you know, you're gonna have to factor in that Japanese whiskey hype tax. So it kind of sort of makes sense. But the leaderboard is actually puts it uh, pretty high, right above the little book chapter six, which I mean, I think is a pretty good company for it to be in. So overall, I think this is a great whiskey to drink, maybe like during the summertime when it's hot and you're out and about, you're somewhere, maybe just having a light lunch or something like that. It's not gonna be something that's great for a mid-winter type of whiskey. Um, to me, it seems very akin to the same class of whiskeys as the Hibiki non-age statement blended whiskeys. Uh, so maybe like the Harmony or some of the Master Blends. Um, but I I'm really glad that I got this one. Um, and if again, if you are super into Japanese whiskeys that are blended like this, I think this is a great intermediate level whiskey for all that. Uh, but for me, you know, with it's overly complex, it's overly delicate, and it's overly short finish, you know, I don't think that uh, I'll end up buying another one of these bottles in, in the not so near future. All right, so that's it for our review of the Ichiro Blue 2022 world whiskey and i hope you all enjoyed it and if you like these videos of the wanders which we are in the middle of right now <laughs> uh, -huh, uh the reviews the unbottlings the unboxings and really all the great stuff we got cooking up for you and we got lots of great stuff don't forget to like and subscribe and that way you can get updates when our newest videos come out every sunday and sometimes in between now just remember if you do find a little whiskey that you love just buy it because if you don't somebody else surely will in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out, and adios.